if I'd be into it here. Ideally, it would be in the bottom of the cart as opposed to, you know, sitting on top. We made it a little too big so it doesn't fit. But the idea is you'd be walking around the store with your shopping cart with this little microcontroller attached to the antenna. You'd be tossing items in your cart, you know, as you go. So we toss one in, it beeps, it picks it up. It would store the information, it's storing the, the list of information there, the tag. And it would store it and you know, keep throwing items in as you go around. Keep track of them. Then you get to the front of the store and you plug it in and you know, you'll see something like that with your output. You know, what items you have in your cart, how much it costs. You just swipe your card, you don't have to individually scan any items. You swipe your credit card, you pay, and you're done. That's the idea. So that's the basic concept there. I don't want to go into more details about the antenna stuff. Maybe pull. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Every five pull seconds them. it recognizes something is missing. So it does Yeah, yeah. So it's down to two tags in the list there. Every five seconds it'll check, so it may take a second. Yeah. I'll broke it. Oh, I'll probably come in. Give it a second. It should recover. There's a lot of error being we I think I think being in this room and it's just a different oh, environment that it's used to, it's kind of freaking out at the moment. Okay, we'll, we'll get it in front of here again. It's yeah. just kind of sorry. Okay, so now it recognizes that there's one tag. But then how about when you stack them up? I mean, when you... um, that is an issue. Um, the biggest issue we had is, or one of the biggest issues is the antenna. Um, the RFID band we're working in is 13.56 megahertz, which is a huge problem in designing an antenna to, uh, I mean, a half wavelength dipole is like 10 meters. So you can't put a 10 meter antenna on the cart. You know, it not radiate, not pick up items all over the store. And so that was a big problem. So. We came up with this design, it's matched to 50 ohms, and the read range is only about 4 inches in simulation. In reality, the read range is about 2 inches. So um, that's something that would probably need a lot more money and a lot more time to invest to make the perfect antenna. Um, this doesn't radiate really at all. Um, there's no interference really, anything. It's basically just an inductive coupler. Um, so that turned out to be, we didn't think that was going to be a huge problem, but that turned out to be 50% of the project. Um, so yeah, stacking them as you get farther and farther away, um, they don't read because there's no there's no power. And also we have such a very narrow bandwidth that if you have certain types of materials, it can kind of change the frequency so then it wouldn't be matched well enough that we would be able to pick it up. So that's something that also needs to be... One uh, bottom, one the side. So we tried, we tried kind of like a cage structure like they do in the MRI type thing. But the problem is our reader is so low power that it wouldn't excite the structure. Um, it said it put out about 200 milliwatts, but in reality it was only about 100 once the antennas included in all of that. So we need a higher power system to do that. But then you also have to be careful because higher power means radiation, means picking up items all over the store. Right. So um, and that was power means you need a bigger battery to run the thing in the park too. Right. So it starts adding up, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough project. But. So does, does this thing currently have its own match, built-in matching network? No, it's actually matched by design. Um, we tuned it using yeah. this glass tail right here. So at first when we simulated it, we had a certain length, which was only about right here. But then we added several millimeters or centimeters to that And if you see, there's an actual this is the coax excitation. This is the short. So um, this is kind of the inductive side. And then all of this adds capacity. So it's kind of tuned with inductors and capacitors per se, but not literal inductors and capacitors to match at 50 ohms and to operate at 13.56. So could you, you can kind of add on your own matching network auxiliary? Yeah, I mean, you could you could add a matching network, and we thought about that, but that kills a lot of your power. Um, it, it draws a lot of it, a lot of energy, and that that's harmful because then you know nothing gets excited except for the very beginning. And it's well matched right now. I mean, it's. 40 something ohms. Yeah, I mean, you can look like too, so. the SWR, like this is where the simulated was, which is one. I mean, it's, any, anything under two is awesome. Yeah. And this is the actual one, and it's like not even 1.5. So theoretically, that's an awesome match. Um, and you can see the difference here. Like, here's, here's the simulated, which is almost perfectly matched at one. Here's the fabricated, which is a little bit smaller. So, um, Issues with you know not perfect materials, not great fabrication tools. There's the tag we're using. If anybody's curious, pass around. This antenna.